You're listening to The Raw Reaction on the Angry Marks Podcast Network. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, this is Big Dick, and most important, and do we have Angry Tensai on the line? Fat penises. Wow. How's it going? How's it going, guys? Great to be here. Jordan Garber, legend. How's it going, brother? And you guys got to remember, it's not Jordan J. Garber anymore. It's just Jordan Garber. And you can hang out with me, but don't you dare touch my iced tea. I'm ready to be on the Raw Reaction tonight. Big Dick, how you doing tonight, buddy? Dude, dude I, I, I'm a little broken up this evening, man. You've, uh, I think you've been part of the co- some of the controversy that I've, uh, I've witnessed over the past couple of days. And, ladies and gentlemen, this is not controversy over WWE, although we'll get to that in a moment. This is controversy involving God's country. That's right. Bayville, New Jersey. We, oh we, my God. It was so much drama on the, there's a Facebook page called Bayville, New Jersey, dot, 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 greatest place on earth or something like that. And there's this one guy who runs it and he was talking shit about all the cops and me and the angry times his friend from high school said, Hey, the cops aren't that bad. People aren't that bad. The guy said, yes, they are. And they went back and forth. They banned our friend from the page. Needless to say, now there's like five new Bayville, New Jersey pages. So Facebook, it, it, it was pretty funny though, because it's like, I don't, I don't know, it's, it's like chat room arguments, but people are all serious and fired up about them. And it, it, it was quite entertaining for, uh, I think it was, I think it was Friday night or Saturday night that well, well you, you might be in New Jersey, Angry Tensai, but you know, I'm, you're, you should be way more fortunate to be in a better place because unfortunately, I am still here in Winnipeg, Manitoba, Canada. We're all displaced. You're in Winnipeg. I'm in Houston, Texas tonight. We're all in weird. Look how far we are though. You gotta, you gotta think of the geographic uh, landscape here. I'm in all the way up north where it's cold in Canada and you're in New Jersey. And you're all the way down in Texas. It's like a, kind of like a culture clash here or some, something along those lines, I guess. But you know what? We're making beautiful magic tonight on the, the airways. I think fans can see that this is an international mishmash of wrestling fans. And like, not that I want to quote him, and I know Kevin's such a big fan of Donald Trump, but you know something? Whether it be Canada, whether it be America, we don't win anything anymore. And we never win. But you know what? We're going to start winning, and we're going to win a lot, and we're going to win so much. And I know that that really rings with Kill a Kev. And I'm now fully erect. <laughs> I don't want to talk about me. What I want to talk about, I want to talk about the lightning rod in WWE and the reason why everyone's here. I want to talk about Shane Matt. Why don't you guys tell everybody what's going on? Hello. Shane Matt is back. It's a Mac attack. He came back last week. He is going to take over the business. However, as we discussed last week, apparently he has to wrestle The Undertaker for his family share of or his share of the company in Hell in a Cell. Um, during the show this evening, I know um, everybody was watching. Um, it wasn't really impressive to me, the, uh, the return of The Undertaker. He sort of came back. Um, Vince McMahon brought him out. He came back with sort of a badass, sort of talked back to Vince a little bit, grabbed him by the neck. But uh, it wasn't it wasn't a big, uh, you didn't have like 100 druids or the lights going out or lightning or shit like that. It really wasn't a, it really wasn't super impressive by uh, for for his return. I mean, this has been his first return since Survivor Series, and I really wasn't intimidated. It seemed like he was sort of given Vincent Kennedy McMahon. You'll f off, but uh, 
again, it didn't seem it, it wasn't as epic as I would have expected from uh, one Undertaker. Were you expecting Bayville's own Linda Adamston to break through the ring and choke slam Undertaker straight to hell? I, I was I was really hoping for that. I was actually pulling for um, Joy Stengel to actually uh, jump the barricade and attack the Undertaker from the outside, dressed as a druid. Makes sense to me. Yeah, I mean, it, it would have been that would have made a lot more sense than uh, Big Dick or Jordan Garba. I want to ask you guys: Do you think the rumors on the net are true? Do you feel like there's going to be a bait and switch and Shane is going to have a wrestler or some sort of sponsor stand in his place to fight the Undertaker at WrestleMania? I do, I do not think, I do not think so. Um, I think, uh, Shane O'Mac, he's been training according to the internet. Um, you know, Shane O'Mac, he's big spot Shane O'Mac. He will uh, jump off like the top of hell in a cell or basically do whatever he has to do short of killing himself and possibly even killing himself to win the match against The Undertaker. So I think he's one of the few people a lot more exciting than somebody like Bray Wyatt wrestling The Undertaker again or you, one of your personal favorites, Angry Tensai Braun Strowman. Yes. Uh, so I think I think Shane O'Mac actually, he will do the crazy spots that will have people going absolutely bananas. And shit, it's, it's a lot better of an option. I'm... I'm Ten times more happy to see Shane O'Mac in a match than Sting in a match. <laughs> what happened to Jordan J. Garber? I need this guy. I wanted to shut up and listen to Jordan Garber. Where is he? He got dropped from the call for a second. Uh, let's get him back on the line. Yeah, man. Uh, I, I thought it was he, he hung up in disgust. No. Yeah. Hang on a second. We're going to get him back here. I'll keep us busy in the meantime. Jordan right. J. Garber. Jordan Garber is here on the Raw Reaction. It's no longer Jordan. We got rid of the J. We got rid of the Parrots. We got good old classic Jordan Garber here on the Raw Reaction. Not for long. I just wanted to give my overall opinion on Raw. Raw was overall was a pretty good show. I don't didn't really like the ending that much. You know, it's so predictable how all these things happen. I think the Undertaker segment could have been longer. And I think the mid-card matches could have been a little bit better. But it wasn't terrible. So out of ten, I will give it a I don't know. I'll give it a six. What do you guys think? Uh, I'm going to defer to Big Vic on this. I'm not capable of my own thoughts. He thinks for me. I'm going to say probably closer to a four or five. I I'm not a big fan, and this has been sort of an ongoing issue I've had. I've not been a fan of pay per view developments leading up to pay per views as far as the mid card matches are concerned, like. You've seen, I think we've seen the last couple of pay-per-views where basically you have two, like two or three matches in the pay-per-view and then sort of the SmackDown before the pay-per-view, they pull together matches. Right now you have sort of League of Nations doing whatever. You have AJ Styles and Y2J doing whatever. We have, um, the Dudley Boys and Usos. I guess they're sort of forming a rivalry. There's no real, there's no real direction on this. No real lead up to set up WrestleMania matches. And I feel like we're going to have the same couple of matches and we have probably about I think three or four, probably I think four rolls until the next, until uh, WrestleMania. And I feel like we're not going to see, we might see one more match up until the week before and then just have like five matches thrown together where everybody gets thrown in and then the social outcasts and big show and the Wyatt family all get thrown into the under a giant battle Royal. But uh, yeah, I think they I think they need to do a better job of developing mid card matches. Yeah, you look at the League of Nations, and it's one of those things where um, it, it's not what you expected it to be. When it first started out, you thought this it would be this big thing in the WWE when Sheamus had the belt. But now you look at the League of Nations, and it's one of those things where it's like this is not what I thought it out to be. And it, honestly, I find the faction a little bit boring. And I know it has great talent. All, all every individual is a great talent, but I think they would all be better off as singles competitors, in my opinion. Yeah, I mean, if, if, even two of them form the tag team or something, that that'd be fine. But I mean, I, I feel like Wade Barrett. I don't think you're going to see him wrestle before he's released again. So I think he's just sort of there in spirit, just to run out of his contract, and do some interference, and be a bad guy. But I mean, it's just. Rusev and Del Rio and Sheamus, I mean, they're all upper mid card potential together, but individually, they're not, we don't have a 
singles competitor for the championship. Like there's no but one person pushing for a championship with them like you would hope with a, a mid to upper card faction like this. They need to be repackaged. I'd probably put Rusev in a Laparka costume and I'd put the remaining three members in the machines outfits from the eighties. I think they could all be uh I think they should all be Laparka. Yeah, Laparka is very over. In fact in Mexico there's like three of them. Just saying. Yeah, so we, we can have Laparka four through seven. Like the Vianos. Well, um, I know Kev is actually in La Parca, cost, La Parca pajamas as we speak at his house. I would love those. I would love to get La Parca pajamas. Just wear those out in public. I would totally do it. I'm a big La Parca guy, to be honest with you, Jordan. Um, I, I don't know if in the Federation you work in if La Parca has ever made an appearance, but I'm a huge fan. Um, no, I haven't had the, actually had the honor to work with or meet La Parca. Hopefully one day in the future, though. Tell us, tell the listeners a little bit about what, what organization you're part of these days and what's going on. Well, um, right now, I, um, I'm involved just helping out with a promotion in Minnesota and Wisconsin called Seal Domain Wrestling. There's actually a show coming up there on March 5th in Danbury, Wisconsin at the St. Crocs Casino. That is in, like I said, Danbury, Wisconsin, March 5th. For more information, check out Seal Domain Wrestling on Facebook. And honestly, with promotions, I'm involved with this local promotion here in Winnipeg as well called uh, Caveman's World Amplified. They moved it up to Collins World Amplified after a feud of the name change in a company or sort of thing. It was a really good angle. You can see me there in Winnipeg, Manitoba, once every three months, I believe. And then pretty much uh, any upcoming stuff that I have going on, you can follow me on Twitter, Jordan J. Garber, and find out. Jordan Garber's World is coming up on Angry Mark soon. So um, there's definitely some stuff coming up for Jordan Garber, and the future looks bright for him. So I hope you guys uh, have a great night, and it was great to be on tonight. Thank you, Jordan Garber, man. We we love you. You know that. So glad to have you on, brother. <laughs> Not a problem. Have a good night, guys. Take care. Jordan Garber, let me tell you something. That kid is smart as hell. You want to know why, Big Dick? Because he knows to get away from a train wreck <laughs> and a car accident <laughs> while he can. <laughs> I'm very confused by the Jordan J. Garber, Jordan Garber thing, because when he ripped, ripped off his Twitter, he then said Jordan J. Garber again after saying, don't call him Jordan J. Garber. I think he's a little, he might be having an identity crisis. It happens. He definitely, he definitely is having an identity crisis. I would tell you right now, let's just, let's just throw it out there because this is what the fans want to hear. This could be the best raw reaction we've ever done here. This right here could be the very best. Talked about yeah. Shane and it's pretty, it pretty lacking. It wasn't. It wasn't a great show. What about was, Brock Lesnar? Did he show up? No, Brock Lesnar did not show up. Shane McMahon did not show up. Um, Dean Ambrose did show up. He got in the face of Triple H at the beginning, and then got beat down by League of Nations and Triple H at the end, and he got a title shot somehow. But um, he got a title yeah. shot. I, I don't know. It didn't say. They didn't say when, but he basically he got beat down by League of Nations, and Triple H beat him up a little bit. Then he smacked Triple H, and like went after him, and pretty much got him pissed off. And Triple H was like, "Okay, you can have a title shot." So I don't know when that's going to be. Hopefully, that I mean the fans were all about Triple H when he came out at first, but then when Dean Ambrose came out, they were sort of like they gave him to Daniel Bryan pop. So I, I hated the fact that they already pushed the Brock Lesnar. Uh, Dean Ambrose at WrestleMania. I would have rather seen it be something like, okay, yeah. Ambrose Triple H, if you win, it's a three-way match. Did they have Divas tonight, Vic? They did. Remember that, Matt? Remember what we were talking about a couple weeks ago where um, the number one contender match for the NXT title was a full pinfall by under or by, between Samoa Joe and Sami Zayn? Or yeah, Sami Zayn? They, they did it. They did it. They did the double pinfall. So we're going to have a stupid triple threat match at WrestleMania. He didn't say what it is going to be yet. But, uh. Lynch has no business being in that match. Why can't we have Charlotte and Sasha straight up? Yeah, that's, uh, that's what I think it should be. But I, I, I almost feel, I, I hate the fact that they're pretty much copied the same exact finish as the. You said that too. Yo, you said that. Were- One was a double, uh, tap out or double submission move. Interesting. Yeah, so that might be coming up next week. Who knows? Did the um, television title defended tonight on the um, the Raw tonight, Vic? 
the uh, television title. Um, it was not. I think that uh, for the 45th straight week, Zack Ryder has not been on Raw to defend it. Really? Did Zack Ryder defend the internet championship? He did not. He is he is now in a tag team. I think they're called the Bro Riders or the Brodsky. Yeah. Pretty glad it was so far. I mean, there weren't even really any title matches. What about Calypso? Um, Calypso and Sin Cara number fake is, uh, they wrestled Sheamus and Rusev and lost, which again, it's sort of, sort of lame. I mean, Ziggler wrestled, uh, Miz and it was like a three minute match and the Miz won. They're doing too much trading wins and losses and somebody like the Miz, I can understand him being in a WrestleMania, but I don't know. I mean, Ziggler's the one to push to a championship. Miz could be on. He can do the highlight reel or the Miz TV or whatever before or during the show and he, he or be in a battle royal. I mean, the, the, the trading wins and losses is just getting too much. I mean, the Dudley boys beat the Usos um, pretty easily. Big Show beat Kevin Owens via, I think it, I didn't see the match, but I think from what I heard, I think it was like a crotch chop. Kevin Owens did him last week on uh, SmackDown. It was, just, it was just easy booking. I don't know. The only thing we were missing was a Braun Strowman fight. Kill a cap. It appears we lost Angry Tenzai there for a minute. Let's get him back. I'm lost without him. We're trying. All right. Appreciate that. Where did Jordan J. Garber go? He had to run. Uh I still can't believe he just dropped little J like that. Dude, I don't know. That's questionable, man. The J makes him look more legitimate. It looked prestigious. It did. But, you know, really, what really, what really put him over was the parrot. What's a parrot? A parrot. Bird. No, but what, what do you mean? Did he have a parrot? Yeah. And apparently, the- and apparently he let the parrot go too. Must be hard times over in Winnipeg when he's got to fire both his middle initial and his pet. He might have had to kill the parrot for food. Man, Chet's nest roasting over an open fire. Yeah, I feel, I feel bad. I mean, that's a, probably a nice, uh, it's probably a tasty parrot. The way I usually look at foods is if it's a uh, prettier or the cuter animal, the tastier it is. What's the cutest animal you've ever eaten? Uh, do you know what a puffin is? Yes. Um, I had that in um, Iceland. It was pretty cute, and it was pretty scrumptious. How did how did they serve it? Um, I think it was it was cooked, but it wasn't like it wasn't like fried or anything. It it wasn't like overdone. It wasn't, but it wasn't like sushi. It was like like medium like medium, I think. But it's a pretty cute animal. What 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 do you serve with a puffin? Um, I had some vegetables. And I had some some sort of I think it was like a. Some sort of dipping sauce. Some, I almost want like a soy sauce, I want to say. Okay. Do but, you, uh, yeah. What, and what do you drink with it? Wine, beer? I think I had some beer with it. It was Iceland, so I think I had some Icelandic beer. But it was, uh, it was pretty tasty. I feel like Braun Strowman would have enjoyed like maybe five, five of those. That would have been a good meal for him. Aren't, aren't puffins usually like a, a pretty big size? <clears throat> puffins are like little birds. Like little like parakeets. Oh really? I thought I thought it was bigger. Like you know, not quite the size of like a penguin, but no, no, those things are like like pretty small. But there's a ton of them. They also serve whale over there. I didn't get to eat whale. I don't know. I don't, I wouldn't think it'd be fashionable to eat whale anymore. I thought I thought I thought all the uh, the all the Scandinavian states were trying to cut down on whale. Hmm. The interesting thing to talk about while we're waiting for our host. <laughs> And I didn't, I didn't get to see Raw tonight. This is going great. I can't get Tensai back. Nah, uh, try, do you try a cell phone? Um, you know what? I sure didn't. We should do that right now. I don't yeah. know why I didn't think of that. You should have told me that earlier. You've reached the voice now. Please leave me a message and I'll get back to you soon as time permits. Dude, Tenzai. Jordan J. Garber is looking for you. Jordan J. is coming to get you, Tensai. Believe that. Message sent. Thank you for calling. Goodbye. All right, his his phone may have went dead. Who the hell knows? Um, so, all right. So what what where did we leave off on Raw? Take us through the rest of the show because I'm lost. God, it was freaking horrible. Um, then we had 
uh, Miz Ziggler match that took about three minutes with Miz winning somehow, which I was not a fan of. He shouldn't have won, I don't think. Then we had the Divas match between Becky Lynch and Sasha Banks, which they double pinned each other a la NXT. So we don't know who's facing Charlotte, one or both or neither. Um, they should be neither. They, they, they should bring in a new number one challenger. That'd be nice. I, I think they should put the strap on Bree and just let her retire. They're going to bring in Virgil. Dude, Lonely Virgil is the man. By the way, that Ziggler Miz match I was telling you about, mm-hmm. it took a minute, not three minutes, which mm. I mean is a waste of absolute talent. Yeah. All right. So what yeah. happened after a Divas match? Um, Stephanie McMahon came out. She got flooded a whole lot. Talked about how she hated Shane, how Undertaker was going to kill him, and her family was a legacy, and her husband was great. And she basically got warded up pretty good. Um, her pro- she was pretty good on the mic where she didn't let, she didn't pause enough for a lot of what's, but she was basically, she took her trophy from last week and left the ring and knocked over the table because she was pissed off. Lucha Dragons lost to League of Nations in about five minutes. Sheamus and Rusev look pretty strong here. I don't know what they're doing with Callisto and Sin Cara or E Sin Cara in Spanish, but uh, apparently they're putting them back together. Callisto has, still has the title. Um, Ryback beat Adam Rose in like two minutes. I guess apparently uh, Ryback is now a uh, bad guy after last week. He beat the piss out of Adam Rose and pretty much left the ring. I really hope that Adam, or I really hope that Ryback gets a Goldberg tattoo. I think that'd be funny. If he wants to be a bad guy, he should do it. Um, but yeah, now he's a bad guy. So I can picture him wrestling uh, Kane at WrestleMania on the pre-show. It's going to be horrible. No, nah, that ain't going to be so bad. You know, that might be okay. If it was Big Show, it would suck. And then we had the um, WWE Champions New Day versus AJ Styles and Chris Jericho. Um, Jericho and Styles won in about nine minutes. He, it was the best match of the night, I think. But, I mean, it was still nine minutes. I think they each got their spots in, and they basically challenged New Day for a title shot at some point in the future. Then we had Vince with Undertaker. I think I told you before, it's pretty lackluster return by Undertaker. Yeah, really, the return by Undertaker really sucked, actually. I, I can only imagine. Yeah, it's pretty bad. And then we had one of the uses, took on Bubba Ray. Bubba won very quickly in this match. It was not a great match. I think they used the table as a weapon at some point. Um, the Dudleys to interfere. Then we have Kevin Owens and Big Show. Like I said, that was a non-title match where Big Show got a count out in about three minutes. Sort of stupid. They, he got basically he got a count out the same way as Big Show got, was counted out the other day. I think it was crotch shot, crotch shot. I forget. Um, yeah, it crouched him. Okay. I was top rope. All right. And one with a count out. So it's pretty horrible. Brie Bella wrestled Naomi. Naomi won in about four minutes. Not a great match. I think that they're, um, Lana was talking shit before the match and after the match a little bit, but I don't know. That might be, uh, maybe Brie and Lana are setting up for me to be Brie's retirement match at WrestleMania. That would be, uh, um, a good way to get Brie out of there and, Put over Alana as an actual wrestler. And then Ambrose and Del Rio. Ambrose won by DQ once everybody in the league beat him up. Triple H came in, beat him up. Then Ambrose smacked Triple H and, you know, for about five seconds, really pissed Triple H off. Triple H agreed to a title match. And as he was leaving, uh, Ambrose basically crawled up to the mic and said, thanks or thanks, buddy, or something like that. And Triple H came back down and beat the crap out of him some more. And it was a show. It really wasn't that great. Yeah, sounds like it. So I'm going uh, to give the show a 3.5 out of 10. I really didn't like it at all. Um, like I said, there's a lot of matches, a lot of very short matches, which I hate, and no build-up to WrestleMania. I mean, there could be some build-up, but they didn't do a very good job of building it up. Maybe they're building up 
Miz as a championship threat or going to add Ambrose to the main event. But they didn't do a very good job of that, of making me really buy it and build anything up. I think it was just, I felt like it was just an episode of trading wins, which I mean, you have another, I think, four draws until then. So I think we're going to get a lot more of that shit. Yeah. So if Donald Trump does not win the presidency of the United States, will he return and make Raw great again? I think Jordan J. Garber is going to make Raw great again. He just might. He just might. But I think he's going to have to bring the parrot. You know what? That parrot and that J equals ratings. Very much. Movie buys. Movie buys. Uh, tomorrow uh, night on the Undisputed Wrestling Show. In the second hour, we're going to have... Uh, I wish Tenzai was on because he probably would have heard of this guy. Um, he wrestles throughout Connecticut, Long Island, on the East Coast. Wrecking Ball Ligurski is going to be our second hour guest. In the first hour... We are going to get ROH stars, the War Machines, Roe and Hanson will be appearing, and the, we'll get caught up with everything that they're doing. Uh, last week's episode of the Undisputed Wrestling Show was really great. We had Demolition on. They, they sat with us for a good hour. Um, then we had some time with the uh, NWA uh, uh, Pacific Northwest champion, Buddy Highway, filling us in on his career. He just recently won that title in a tournament. It was previously a title that was held by Bad Blood. Bad Blood gave up the title after he defeated Angry Mark's own morning star Will Huckabee to win the uh, NWA Continental Championship. Uh, but Will Huckabee is, is not down on his luck or any way because this weekend Will Huckabee won the NWA Mid-Atlantic tag team championship along with his buddy joe black they they had a really strong performance and they're going to be on a real strong run so there there's some some wrestling news but i am sure that mr morningstar will fill us all in on that tomorrow night undisputed wrestling show on angrymarks.com 9 p.m of course on voc nation if you're staying over there you're going to get the latest episode of in the room with brady hicks so definitely check out those two great shows right there. Um, Vic, you got anything else to add before we get out of here tonight? Um, no, no, I don't. All right, well, hit the music. Um, write a letter to Monday Night Raw and tell them to stop sucking. <laughs> Indeed. And if anybody's got any complaints about this show, I'll apologize in advance. We did the best we could. Um, please don't send complaints to Stevie J. You can just send them straight to me. It's okay. Um, you can, you can address that to kill a Kev, AKA Jim Cornette Jr. Uh, care of angry marks podcast network. Oh, and they, will, they, be, they will probably be deleted. Uh, no, I'll, I'll read it each and every one of you. And if you make, if you make it entertaining enough, we might read it on the air. We may even send you a DVD. I don't know what we'll send you a DVD of, um, something. Okay. I thought you were going to send one of your bestiality forms. No, that stays in my private collection. Fair, fair enough, fair enough. That stuff's uh, pretty rare. Yeah. I, oh, we, we'll 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 send you the Tammy Sitch DVD. There you go. There you go. That that'll get you excited. <laughs> All right, brother. We'll uh, hit the music, and uh, I'll talk to you next week. All right. Thanks a lot. Maybe next week we'll get Angry Tenzai back for a little bit longer. Boy. And may and may and maybe we'll fight Jordan's J. Dude, Jordan J with the parrot is legit. No J was an imposter. No J was no buys. Exactly. It was pretty pissed for. There you go, man. There you go. All right. Enough bullshitting. Getting out of here. Good night, guys. All right. Hit the music, brother. Mm-hmm.